The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And we are so convinced that the entrance of his word coming to you will give light and solution to all life's issues. This message is brought to you by the Word Center Church, Nigeria. Ministry, Pastor Shegun Ola Sende. Father, we are grateful. We are thankful for the things you have done. We are most glad, most blessed for your hand upon our lives. Blessed be your name. Lord, we ask today that you please show up in our case and hear us as we come. That you will send your spirit and your word and your life will break forth upon us mightily. That none of us shall remain the same. That you will please show us your salvation. Please, we beg of you, let your work go with power. Let heaven be open for a revelation of your word. And please, at the end of the day, take all glory to your son. Send your help to us, O God. And make our tongue like a pen of another writer. Thank you, precious Redeemer. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please have your seat. God bless you. Welcome to church. Again, on this Tuesday, light invasion service. And we believe God so strongly. And the Lord we do as well as we have come to his presence by his spirit. I believe strongly also that the entrance of his word give a light and perfect understanding to the simple. Simply means that if you really want to have understanding of life, you can't get it anywhere else except in the word of God. Nobody can understand life. Life is a mystery. Not only is it a mystery, it's a super mystery. But men that understand the word, men that the word of God come to, can understand the mystery called life. And you can decode and you can upcode and you can unlock the mysteries of life. Simply means you between an ignorant person, you remain a, an ignorant person if you don't have access to the word of God. The word of God is what gives you understanding about the life that you are living in. Let the entrance of his word give a light and perfect understanding to the simple. So the understanding that comes by the word is perfect. So what is a perfect? So you need to understand that what you are getting is perfect. There is nothing else anywhere else. There is no perfection anywhere else except in the word of God. And I'd like you to please pay attention today. How many of us were in the Mustard City yesterday? What an open heaven we had, a great time in God's presence. And we trust God for more today. And the Lord of heaven will send his spirit, his word. See, and send his revelation. The word of God will be hearable, visible, seeable. And by the grace of God, the word will be touchable. So at the end of the day, every man can have an experience of God via the word of God. Somebody say amen. I can hear you say amen. I can hear you say amen. Okay. So we begin a journey on Sunday about the marital values, family values, and heritage with family. And I will continue on this maybe to the end of the month, maybe next Sunday. And let me start teaching you today. <laughs> Realities. Let me make it clear to you whatever any spirit is able to carry it out against your parent, they spirit believes so strongly that they will do the same thing against you. If your dad or your mom had issues, your dad issues, your mom issues, the spirit that fought them to those issues have confidence that they are going to come again to the seed of that man and fight that person too because they have won the father, they believe they will win the son. Is the psychology of the spirit. And I can prove it to you in many, many ways. Blessed be the wisdom of Isaac. Do you notice that I read my Bible? Please pay attention. I read my Bible and find that the other patriarch of eight great men has a great house. You will see Abraham has 380 men. And you will see the house of Jacob plenty. Who notice that Isaac house has no maid? Who noticed that Isaac, I read Isaac and Rebecca, all through their journey, Abraham had servant that he should have handed over to Isaac. But if you notice anywhere, Isaac had servants, 
But Isaac had no servant staying in his house. Why do you think Isaac avoided that? Who wants to speak to me? I'm not even teaching yet. Let's just see how God can help us tonight. Isaac said to Rebecca, Rebecca was married from outside that, that land. Do you understand what I'm thinking about? Okay. So Rebecca came to meet Isaac, whose father as servant, which one of the servants was the one that went in search of Rebecca. To bring Rebecca. Rebecca met the servant of Isaac before Isaac. And then as Abraham departed out of the scene, with all his magnanimous, with all his greatness, with all his servanthood command, says he came to Isaac, and Isaac had nobody made living in his house. Not even the wife has a maid. Do you ever wonder why Abraham, Isaac took that decision? Have you ever sat down and asked yourself a question? What is happening there? Why did Isaac have no maid? Why does Rebecca ask no maid? Is that you're not wealthy enough? Let me it again. Isaac, Rebecca had no maid. Then Isaac had two children. It was contrary to the edit of those days. In those days, two children is not, is kind of unacceptable. In those days, many children are the order of the day. Anyone that has one or two is considered weak. In short, one or two children is not considered that of a child anyway. In those days, you see a man when they are writing their history, he he gave back to this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and he had 13 children. And that's a man. Now, I think children can be from two women, from three women in those days. Then you notice that when it comes to Isaac, he only had Esau and Jacob. And the woman could not conceive anymore, maybe, because Isaac was 60 when he had a child. Maybe Rebecca should be around, let's say, 40 or 50. Had the child. Then after the child, he would, I know maybe they tried to have more children. Let's say, for example, now, and they could not. The next thing is that. The servant of Rebecca becomes a mistress of Isaac, naturally. Then Isaac knew that what happened to what produced Ishmael will produce more in him. And Isaac understands what Ishmael did to him. So Isaac won't know Ishmael in his account. So the way to avoid Ishmael, do you know that all are all... How do I explain this to you? <laughs> Isaac avoided to have a kind of Ishmael and the two sons he had I went enough trouble. Isaac and Esau, man, those boys. Jacob had no understanding of why the father avoided it. When Jacob married, he wanted to marry Rachel, they gave him Leah, then he married Rachel and Leah. Then there was a Bilia and Zipa or something, wasn't there? And they began to go in and go out. Do you know at the end of the day, Zipa and Bilia had more children than, than Leah and Rachel? Rachel had two. Leah had four. Zipa and Bilia had more. Who knows this? So do you now understand why? Isaac was a standout in that generation. And the root of the problem of today is embedded in family mistakes. What is that what I'm talking about? So, to understand what happened to Solomon is to understand what has been happening to all the patriarchs. Why they made that decision of, normally, normally, if, if Isaac has been the one that screwed Jacob, because Jacob left him at 18. If Isaac has screwed Jacob at that chapter of his life, because he must have screwed Jacob at Probably a, a, a young child, a toddler, a young child, a growing child, then a teenager. Then at the time of making decision of family, Isaac was not there. There was no Isaac and Rebecca that went to pay by price. Isaac has, Jacob has formed his whole family outside his family. Do you know what I'm talking about? Jacob married. The father was not there. He was not even told. The mother was not there. He had children. He had first one, second one. He had all the maids. The parents did not know. It was, in short, Last time when you read, Jacob only came to bury the father. I remember. So they didn't know he had family, nothing, nothing. They're just living. But if you look at it anyway, at that chapter of his life, the Isaac was not there to school him. Who schooled him? Laban. Who had also many wives. So when you see that pattern, you can understand that the pattern that your parents run becomes spiritual. And the pattern wants to show itself over you again. That's why I made a statement that whatever a spirit is able to do to your parent, the spirit has confidence that it can do it to you too unless you are principled enough in the wisdom of God to set up some God informed decisions around you. Never say you can't. That's the problem of leaders that fail the most. I can't. I can't do it. Don't say so. Never. Until you are able to set things around you. Watchmen around you. Send 
principles around you. And you align with that principle to make sure what you believe in is standing, either you like it or not, even if it means it's not punishment. For example, no matter how I see you, even if I meet you in the rain, look at us, and I'm passing in my car, and mommy is not in the car, I will not wait for you and carry you, even if you're in the rain. I know when you get to church, your face will be hard. You might be going in your heart and be cursing my heart. Say, what kind of pastor is this? He saw his member in the rain and he's passing by. So far, you are a female, I will not carry you. Passing that person. And I've seen some people that reacted against it. One day, me and I are going home. I gave her a transport fee. We are going to the same direction. I said, you take transport. Me. We are going home. It's going to, she's coming to my house. I said, no, we can't go together. So you take transport fee. Meet me at home. And some look at me that they have ah, what the kind of, but that's principles of life. Now, why do I have to say that principles? I want to ask. My grandfather asked one wife, it, contrary to his time of his culture, he asked one wife. I was told that my grandfather was called the weakest man among his friends because he's the one that asked one wife. He even called him Mumu for love because from what I heard, my grandmother is one beautiful woman, so she. She danced with my grandfather. And my grandfather decided to forfeit his um, princehood for love. And then um, he chose not to go with his family to become the king. So he stayed with his wife. And that, this is how it happens. Two families are fighting. Two royal family. One family royal, another family royal. But from that royal family has come my grandfather, my grandmother, who have married. So when my grandfather's family are going, my grandfather stayed behind with my grandmother. So that is why my paternal cousins are far away. My cousins now are my cousins from my grandmother. So she's a cousin from my grandmother. Because the same mom that gave back to my father gave back to her mom. You understand me? So apart from those lineage of the ones they gave back to, other ones who are belong to my grandfather have moved to another city from their own city. They have their own king beside my own town. My good grandfather stayed behind with his wife, so he, he supported the wife of the family of the wife who is fighting his own family. And love one. What a story of love. <laughs> but you know what? One day I asked my grandmother, What about his own father? He said, hey, Dama, my grandfather was the son of his mother. The man left, went somewhere else, impregnated, left, went somewhere else, impregnated. Left. The guy was a father of nations. And I ask, between my grandfather and his father, who is more great? He said, my, his father. Instantly, a light great for to me. That in my own family, problem of women is always with the one that will be great. Instantly, I knew it. And if you notice the one that will be great, you will have to let the woman. Oh, so if I happen to be the one that God chose to be great in this lineage, there will be a problem. Okay, what do we do? Set boundaries. Who understand what I'm talking about? The problem with most of all that we, we over trust ourselves that what happened to them can happen to us. But the spirit that defeats them has a lot of faith in itself. That if it comes against you, it will defeat you. And the spirit does not respect what you have achieved. So I will do a trace for you. And I'll start teaching. And I'm going to today. Abraham had Sarah. Then had Agai. Who knew Agai? Agai was not. The father of Abraham was Terah. Who knew Terah? Who I said about Terah before? Fantastic man, I believe. Family man. He was the only man I saw that. When Abraham was going, he followed him. Everybody said, leave your family. Abraham didn't leave him. Who noticed? Abraham was walking out. Those who walk with him, walk with him. And the father of Lot has died. So the grandfather was the one taking care of Lot. So when Abraham was leaving, that man took Lot. Wise man. He knew his time is almost up. And doesn't want to leave Lot to himself. So he followed Abraham, not because of Abraham, but because of Lot. Says, as he got to a place, he was tired. He told Abraham, surely, it's your firstborn. And I wish I can begin to teach you about how to handle family people when they come. There is a lot of wisdom there. But not tonight. Now, they come. And when that man died, Abraham buried him and continued the journey with Lot. Meanwhile, the elder brother of Abraham was the father of Sarah. So when God said, leave your family, anytime God is talking about, maybe I should balance it. Anytime God is talking about your family to you, please don't look at your wife and you. Imagine God says to you, that, leave your family and you want to leave your wife. And you're saying, God told me, leave my family. Oh God, you are not wise. When God says, leave your family, he's talking about Abraham's wife. Answer me. Talk to me. When God says, Abraham, leave your family, he's not talking about Abraham's wife. Your wife is not your family. Your wife is you. You are one. So God does not separate 
no matter the instruction of the spirit, please learn that the instruction of the spirit does not separate couples. Any instruction you claim to hear from God or claim to hear from a prophet that separate couple is not from God. There is no instruction that will come from Yahweh that will divide what he has joined. When God tell Abraham, leave your family, leave your people. He didn't say leave Sarah. Because Sarah is also a family. Imagine Abraham walk out without Sarah. It's not possible. So when I hear a lot of things, I hear a lot of people that come and say, oh, and they went to meet the prophet. He tell them your wife is a witch liver. I bet if you marry a witch, stay. You two become a wizard. And enjoy the witchcrafty world together. Because you don't have a choice anymore. That is why it's important for you to know what you want to marry before you marry it. Now, finding your way out in marriage sometimes leads to death. Untimely death. So I, I can tell you without any out of doubt, Abraham was dealing with Agai. Jacob had Billy and Zeba. And Billy and Zeba will know their status. The day Abraham was going to, I mean, Jacob was going to face Esau after a long time. I says he divided his family. See, scale of preference. Who knew that scale? Who noticed that scale? That day I choose to myself. Say, if I'm a woman, I will never be a second wife. And the day I, that, I just made up my mind, I will never be a second wife. If you want to be a second wife, it's your choice. But it's not right. That says, when that day came, Jacob did the scale. Who saw that scale? He, he said, Bible quoted. He said, he said, if he's coming, let him destroy us by faces. So Jacob now chose to show the face that should be destroyed first. He put Celia, Belia, <laughs> Leah. He now put Joseph behind. Because you know, that day it occurred to me that scale of life opened my eyes and said, How can a man ask this scale and a woman choose to be in a billion? How do women today choose to be a sipa? Because in the days of battle, the man will expose you. See? Because in this, it, it, see, you can have the best cooking skills, you can have the best house management skills, but the art of men, and I'm talking about man, human man. The art of man is not controlled by all of those things. When a man has his own criteria for creating value, every man. And the value a man has in his heart, I doubt anybody can change it. They are living together until problem comes. Everybody thought they are favorite until problem comes. Everybody thought they are the important person until problem comes. When the problem comes, the guy set up his standard. Guess what? Zillion, billion. And I read that and I said to myself, how is somebody in today's world, a woman, and you're not complaining? Imagine. And sir, do you know what amazes me? Thank God Israel did not come to fight. If Israel have come to fight, if Jacob will not shed one tear. He will have escaped with Joseph. Because he knows how to escape. Read his story. He's smart at escaping. He knows how to always escape. He will have escaped with that boy. Took Benjamin. Take his own, I mean, sorry. Take Joseph and run. And lead Zippa, a woman. And let that woman find a way of escape. And say, Jacob, you're not a good man. He just be laughing and say, ah. You just find out that I'm not a good man. I'm a good man. I'm your husband. So there can be husband and wife relationship that has no value. Most of us that come from polygamous setting. Sorry. 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 I'll give you an example. I have a friend. We used to be a good friend. We lived together for a long time. The father is a son. Late son now. Fantastic man. Who has many children. My friend is number 45. My friend. And I think the woman that had children for him that we knew until the day he died was 13. After he died, he became 21. Because others became a short. And those guys look so much like the man. So there is no denier, no DNA in it. So what happened? When the man died, rich man, very rich. In those days, one of my friends and all his half brothers, half sisters come home at the same time. Even the guy, the man has a white woman who has children for him. The woman who has a child has come and collect school fees for our own children. So they all come around. And because we are good friends, we stay in their house. And I will see all of them come around. And they will be telling their dad, Dad! I said, yes. They call it that that chief. He said, chief. He said, yes. He said, um, school fees, 400,000. Now he said, write it down. Put it down. This one comes. What's your school fees? Now he said, my, my school expenses, 700,000. Now he said, write it down. Put it there. That's how we, I don't know how that man has that stability. Write it. Put it there. Write it. He will not even blink. Then all of you go. I will call you later. Everybody's at home. He has a chef. He chef a key. Goat every day. They are all eating, making noise, shouting. Blah, 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 blah. Then the man will ask, they have ask properties, he sell property, then they will bring the money to him in cash. He will sit down, he will not take your, <laughs> your sheep, call his name. Banker! He says, ah, 750. Take. Everybody, yeah, go to school. That's how he does every semester. 
It does not mind. It does not care. And everybody was living like that. Everybody. We are all going there. And the man died. He was his, one of the first seven sons in Nigeria. So it's, it's not an illiterate. When the man died, the man had a, a beautiful, uh, what's it called? Uh, safe. They break the safe after a long time and they bring out the will. The will is just two sentences. Two. Say, let everything I have, everything that remains, be given to the children of my first wife. For that is the only one I love. Others came to collect my money. Full stop. All of the other children are. What day? She gave. That's the truth. The first wife died very early. That's the one you truly love. All of those ones that came. So, and they told them, to buy the fair one, I call it for don't come to me again. Everything, including that big house, and the house is very big in Fenelle, very big house. The house that has so many staff quarters, very big house. Even the man's duplex is too big for him. Everything he gave to the children of the firstborn, children of the first wife are so blessed. They are all in the US, they have companies all around the world. They don't even need anything he has. So those guys just saw the wheel and they felt what their father felt, the pain of their mother. And they told everybody after the burial, shut this house. Every, the, the siblings who have sold their mother's house have nowhere to go. So shut this house, shut down, lock the key, give it to us, and they try. They've not returned it today. The house is under lock and key. And every other thing that man has all over the world was done in the same order. Why? In the heart of the man, the one he loved most is the one he married first. So when you set to for polygamy, there is a tendency, every tendency that you will enjoy luxuries. Maybe. See the attention. But in the real state of life, you will know the value of who you are until that man is no more. And can I shock you? Tell you one truth. It's very important to know in the right setting, the man will go first. In the right setting. The man will go first. Sometimes you see women still leave their children 20 years, 30 years after their father's demise. There's a woman I know, she's 94. 94 years. She's still here. Her husband has gone. My grandfather left 1992. My grandmother left maybe 206 or 207. See the difference? 1992 to 207. Huh? Is it 207? 14. 14. The woman had it until she began to vomit. <laughs> but the man don't go far. No. And the man did not die young. So it's normal. That's a man. That there's this tendency that if the settings are right, you're going to be a great man, successful man. But watch for patterns. Because the patterns that happen to one generation, the spirit that defeat them, has confidence that you can defeat their seed. You understand that? So, if you look at that woman pattern, Abraham had a guy, Jacob had Billy and Zebra. Then you begin to look at other sons. Reuben was a mess. Who knew Reuben? The guy went to his father's wife. So, Sipa and Billy. <laughs> I don't know this way. Sipa and Billy, I don't know which of them. Because Jacob asked no other woman. Apart from Leah, Rachel, and Leah Rachel died, left Bilia and Siba. I don't know how young they are today, but that Ruben can consider Siba or Bilia attractive. I don't know. See that setting. Very terrible. Now, Ruben slept with one of them. The fact Jacob knew, he kept quiet. He didn't talk. Thank God that she can't conceive. She have had the last baby for Jacob, the baby of Ruben. The Bible says when Jacob was to go, he now called Ruben and said, Ruben, I knew what you did. You crouched into my bed. He slept my wife. He say, in excelling, you will not excel. He cursed him. Then you wonder, if Reuben was cursed, then you find out that the curse of Reuben is the reason for the blessing of Jacob, of Joseph. Do you know why? Reuben is the first one. He's the excellence one. But because he failed, that's why God has to look for a replacement. And God proved it again in between Ephraim and Manasseh. God showed us what really happened. The Ephraim and Manasseh story is not needed. It's just to explain to us what happened to Reuben and that's why, when you notice very well, Jacob gave the tribe of Reuben to Ephraim and Manasseh. Who notice it? Jacob said, let them also be my children. And let them be a tribe in Israel. To replace your field brother. That field. He continued that way. Judah. His spirit just entered Judah. I don't know where he came from. Did you like that? Boaz. Mary Ru- What's it called? Ruth. Jesse. The mother of David was not acceptable in the house. Because Jacob, he didn't know that David had a mother until there is a battle. And then he took his father and his mother to go and hide them. Who knew it? The day they are doing, looking for a king. The father was speaking, the mother was not there. Because he was not living in the house. And then David began his own. Very crooked guy. He was one day going to go and fight Naba for sheep and sheep and meat. 
that's going to eat. I'm saying as he was going there, he saw the wife of that man. One time, one time at the other one time, love at first sight. He saw that woman, the woman begged him, give him meat and go back. When she was going back, David was walking with hey, see this beautiful girl. Ooh. The day the woman died, David the, the sent his soldier to go and take somebody else's wife. He asked his eyes. The day that man died, David will, David will be celebrating his house. Say, thank God, oh, it's God. He's not celebrating anything. It's also his wife. So he can took that man's wife. He took that woman. Although he asked Micah, he asked Ainoam, it took Abigail. Problem entered. Then one day, he was walking. Psh, 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 psh. He looked. Bathsheba was bathing. Why is he only somebody else's wife? Psh. A pattern has been set. Who has to somebody else's wife? A pattern came in. He didn't know. A pattern was growing. Was growing. Sure. Tiki, 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 tiki. David did that. He did that. Sir, while he was doing that, I'm not raped Tama. Who knew that? <laughs> Sometimes I ask myself, have you read the book of Kings and you saw what became the life of the daughters of Absalom? Or, because Absalom was a very handsome guy. I say he was one of the most handsome guy ever. But you know, I say he had no son. That's why he raised a pillar in Israel, in the palace. He had no son. But now I said, what become of that daughter? I went to study differently. And I sat down and studied. All the daughters of Absalom married to kings. All of them. But if you see what they produce, you will not doubt that Absalom is their father. If you entered, serious one. Maybe I'll come that, to that one later. Bob says, as that happened, then it came to Brother Solomon. David is God. Not even David. Who we'll knows his brother? Um, uh, what's the name of this guy? Uh, not Amnon. Uh, the one that became king. Uh, Adonijah. Thank you. Who knew him? There was a sweet girl that they brought to David when he was to die. They called her Abishag. Beautiful girl. And sometimes I ask myself, you know, they brought a girl to David. David, only clothes could not make her warm, make him warm. They brought a girl who is virgin, beautiful girl. And David could not do anything. David. Who knew David? David. I saw somebody from the window. <laughs> saw a girl beside her. So all this thing that is pushing you with us on the other. Now, that notwithstanding, the moment David died, I don't need to have lost the kingdom. Oh, come. Oh, Benin. Oh, he went to meet Bathsheba. Go and tell him, sir, that this kingdom is mine. But God gave it to him. But what I want for the kingdom is not the kingdom. I don't want power. I don't want wealth. All I want is just tell him to give me Abishag. Ah, okay. Of all, Abishag was there before. Of all, you are a prince, so a prince in Israel. You can point to any girl and it's yours. What you want is the Abishai, the one that your father had. is in the tribe. It's in that family. It's in that pattern. And the pattern is this. A pattern comes into a family and the spirit comes with it. When the spirit comes into that pattern, he stepped up that pattern, established the end of that thing and want to repeat it again. And that is why as a Christian, you must arise against pattern that you have seen. And don't ever play with pattern and say, Kole can me. Kole Kenya is a deception until you know what to do. Because when the pattern is established, a spirit comes with it. A spirit is established in it. And that's when we make sure it ended one man to gain power over that generation. And they come to Brother Solo, that boy, and I get to heaven. If I find him in heaven, if I find Solomon in heaven, and by any chance his house is beside my house, you can write it down today as a promise for me. I will slap him four times. Say, Solomon, you are very wrong. Ah, so look, I'll be slapping his spirit. God will be telling me, oh, to do. You are all short in this thing. What is wrong with you? What more do you want? But you know, pattern does not respect your success. It does not respect your achievement. When it's a pattern, it keeps pushing you until you. It doesn't matter what God has done to you or what you are doing to God. Pattern will just rest on you and want to make sure that you are able to carry out his own command despite all you are doing. And I will show you, is there. What more will ever want? You are born as a prince, raised in the palace, had access to the best of life. You are prophesied a king before you become a king. You knew your standing in the kingdom. Then by all standard, your brother rose against you, he fell before you. Men rose against you, they fell before you. God make you a king and you kill one thousand sheep. Many have sacrificed and God did not show up. Priests have sacrificed and God did not show up. You sacrificed and God came to you. He didn't send angel. He asked you, what do you want? You said, God, you want wisdom. God, I will give you what no man before you, man after you will ever have. What more do you want? Because he didn't ask for wealth, I will give you wealth. Everything he didn't ask for, God was giving to him. Everything you need to have a balanced life, God gave him everything. Because wisdom without wealth will still make you foolish. Everything. Guess what? Bible was silent about the first wife, second wife. Who knew it? 
You didn't know the first wife of Solomon. You didn't know the mother of if you look at Rehoboam, you will have seen the Bible will have mentioned the mother. Who we'll knows that there was silence about it? You didn't know the first wife, you didn't know the second wife. Because it was not of value to God, because she is married rightly as a king. But God didn't see a trait that Judas trait Wally. And one day God will be amazed when God asks an angel guiding Solomon. And God says, Hey angel, how are you, Sir Fanza? He says, Solomon, how is he, Sir Fanza? He says, How is family? He says, I, I don't understand. Angel says, I don't understand this angel. The angel comes and says, What do you mean? He says, Sir, sir. at her last count, I can't say this is yesterday. But this morning, <laughs> I had that Solomon has gone to 80. God said, What? Woman? He says, Sir, like tomorrow, we're <laughs> looking at 90. God said, What? He said, You give me words now. You know why God don't trust leaders with so much great things anymore? You know why God don't trust leaders with great things anymore? Because most times the blessing of a leader becomes his downfall when there's a pattern he has not dealt with. And I'd like you to see that first today. This pattern, when it happened, that's exactly what happened to the father in the lineage of Solomon. It happens to him. Jerobam also did the same thing. Jerobam had 13 concubines. The boy that is foolish. And they're asking him, he lost 11 tribes. He has 13 concubines. But this is it. Let me now explain it. A pattern I also saw in Judah that I want us to pray about if you can. Judah knows that in all their marriages, as they go for women, there is always a tendency that the most pronounced woman becomes the most terrible among them. Who noticed? All daughters of Judah we are just wives to a good man and they all left. But the king of Judah or the cause of the house of Judah always marry wives. But one of those wives, the most prominent one will always be the most wicked one. Who know Mecca, the daughter of Saul? Who know the daughter of Pharaoh, the most prominent wife? Even uh, the said daughter of Pharaoh was able to shake off she- Queen of Sheba. Solomon was not married that queen. I came to give her gift. Solomon married him. Married him. Solomon, very good guy. The woman came to hear wisdom. Solomon gave him marriage. The woman came with spices and everything. Solomon said, No, you can't go back. The woman was a queen of the greatest, most wealthiest nation in that time. Sheba was very wealthy. Solomon went to the nation to go and marry the queen. Put somebody there as a governor and took the queen out of that place and caught the energy of Solomon, terrible guy. He also has his own. But they said the queen of, the daughter of Pharaoh destroyed all of them. That girl destroyed. And Solomon loved her the most. Because before Solomon built the house for herself, he built the house for her. That's the only way she built the house for her. Fast forward, all of them, to now call it. Who noticed that Jezebel was not an Israelite? It will be very difficult for me to start taking you through step by step. Just follow me. Jezebel was not an Israelite. She was married from a foreign place. Who saw that pattern again? He continued. Then Jezebel came to become the queen of Israel. Now, I like us to read scripture now. Please, permit me. So that we can have a better of what I want to say to you very quickly. Because you need to understand this. And I'm praying for everybody here today. By the grace of God, you will not repeat that pattern. Whatever spirit is behind that pattern, driving that pattern, making it a reality, I'm praying to God today for myself and for you. Whatever pattern there is that has conquered people ahead of us, people behind us, and is trying to fight us now, may God arrest that spirit today. Your dad has a child as a red lock. Is that as a child as a red lock? Are you thinking, oh, it's just. It's just, I can't do it. You can't do what? You are already on the way to it. Because that spirit that did that will be so sure that he can do it to you. When the, what makes pattern difficult that it is always produced by a spirit. And the spirit felt that if he has conquered one before, he can conquer all. Who understand? First Kings. First Kings. 21. It's a story of great sympathy, great tears. And please listen to me. I've been saying some profound things and I will read this listing, and I will run for a few minutes and close. Now, it came to pass, after these things, that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, had by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab speak unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it or it seems, or if it seems good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. That's what this. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me, and I should give the inheritance of my father unto thee. Let me stop here. Let me first say to you, 
It's not my teaching. Let me say to you, very importantly, please understand today that men will throw away anything that is not of value to them. And value is not determined by value. You need to have value for the things of importance to you. Why? Men can cast anything away as long as it's not of value to them. What does that talking about? The guy said there, he said, I will not give you, it's just a small portion. But see the value. He said, it's the inheritance of my father. Who knows it? So it's not the size that matters, it's the value. The king says, I will give you a better one. He said, I don't want better. I want this value. And I wish you can have the same mindset towards the things of God. I wish I can have the same mindset towards you and your church. Towards your wife, your marriage, your job. Things that God places in you. You can have value for it, and you can say, I won't trade this thing for anything in the world. I wish you can you can stay on your instructions, stay on God's guidance, and say, I won't trade it for anything in the world. Even if it looks better, I won't trade it. I, I will always give myself to this, give myself to God, give myself to his work, to his house, to his work. And you have value for it, not because of anything. Because there might be things that look attractive to you that can take you out, but say, no, my value will sustain it. Because it takes value to sustain anything. I like the way the man said, says, I, I'm not going to give it to you. Why? I will give it to you if I'm the owner of it. And I give it to you if I'm the one that bought it. But sir, this thing you are looking at, as far as it is, is the inheritance of my father's. And for me as a man, I'm expected to pass it to my son. Can I bless you today with the word of the Lord? May God give you things that you will pass down to your children. And may you not sell those things of value that you need to pass down. May you not sell the things that you need to have as an inheritance. Because most of us are selling our inheritance. I'm selling it. Things you should pass down to your children. Already you are selling it now. For what? You know, I'm going to pass down not just material things, but spiritual things. I'm going to pass down value of service. I'm going to pass down something stronger than anything that money can buy. So for that reason of passing it down, as they pass it to me, my father has a church, and all my life I've seen him attend every service to date. I've never seen my father for one day, unless he's outside Nigeria, miss a church service for one day. And he has spent 52 years in ministry. And he said, as we're going to join like that before he start ministry. So he's having an active 60 years of Christian work. And he has been that way. And for 60 years, he has never missed service. Oh, you know what that means? You know what that means? 60 years of not missing church. 60 years. I would have. So one thing I said, in the last 60 years, I've never, one day, there's a service going on in church and I'm at home. For 60 years. God, that's, that's great. How many of us today can say, service is going on? And even when service is going on in your front of your house, you are busy washing clothes. One day, somebody said in their church, was talking to me, I was pastoring them. Say, church, say, they are pastoring us. See all these shoes. They are in discipline. I said, what have they done? They are very bad. Very terrible. I said, what have they done? Say, in their own church, they are disciplined. Very right. Very morally of an high standard. I said, okay, I will try my best. I will help. So Sunday morning, I drove to his house because I didn't see her in church. I met her, bring out every dirty clothes. Very many, and she was watching them. I called her and said, Sunday morning. I said, Madam, what do you want to do? Are you washing clothes? I said, ah, it's Sunday morning. I have to wash the clothes. I said, Sunday morning. But you just spoke to me last week about discipline and standard of Christian life of the young one. The ones you are talking about are in church. What are you doing? He said, Ah, I'm a in here. I'm a for sure. I can't wally. So I'm doing here. I said, Man, you are an hypocrite. Very hypocrite. Your standards is not real. And I'm not amazed at what happened to her at the end of the day. Can I tell you the truth? Never, never, and I mean never, anything of value should be sustained. Anything of value should be sustained. Anything of value should be sustained. Whatever you value, you will sustain it. Why does men not sustain it when they don't value it? So they can throw it away. Me, I value it. <laughs> I value God's presence. I value attending church. I value it so much that I can't throw it away. I can't. If you don't see me in church, even during the weeks, I must be at one another kingdom assignment somewhere. For me, I will never trade it for anything. Not because I'm a pastor. Because I know a man ahead of me who has attended service every time for 60 years. And he passed that down to me. I'm not 60 years on that. I'm talking 60 years in God. Let's read that. Let's read And I have came to his house, heavy and displeased because of the word which that brought the Joshua Light has spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my father. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face, and we eat no bread. For what? But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Verse 1. 
And he said unto her, Because I speak unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money or else, if it pleases thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. It's a long read. Anyway, let's continue. I, I, I want to bring out something. Let's, and Jezebel his wife said unto him, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise. You see why family can offend that she now? I will show you so many great things here if I have time. Say, Arise and eat bread and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. What, what a statement of intent. Next one. She, so she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with the seal and sent the letters. We are the vineyard. She wants, I will give thee. See how she wants to give. She, she now said, verse 8 now, she wrote a letter, she sealed it, sent to the elders and to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. Next one. And she wrote in the letter saying, proclaim a fast. Not unto God. Say, proclaim a fast. See evil wisdom. Proclaim a fast. Say, no. And set Naboth on high among the people. See what you want to do. And set two men sons of Belial before him to bear witness against him saying thou didst blaspheme God and the king ah, and then carry him out stone him that he may die no matter what the guy says it does not matter this woman has killed him you understand what I'm talking about here? it's not about Naboth's attitude character testimony it does not matter what she has done, what he has done before his life. He has nothing to do. It's just that is is my God. Any conspiracy against us that comes from leadership people, people that are stronger than us, may they fail before they get to us. The woman said, and carry the men said to men, I don't want to know who they are. Let them just say you blaspheme and don't give him a hearing. Just carry him and stone him and kill him. See what happened. Next one. Next one. And the men of the city. Even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in the city did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And it was written in the letter which she had sent unto them. See what they did. They proclaimed a fast. Set Naboth on high. I'm afraid when men begin to set you higher than who you are, it's a trap. Be careful. Set him on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belia, and sat before him. And the men of Belia witnessed against him. Even against Naboth in the presence of the people. Saying, he didn't write to the people. He only write to the leaders. Elders and nobles. And says, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Huh? Next one. Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Next one. We are going far. We have to read this. And it came pass. When Jezebel had the number was stoned and was there, and Jezebel said to him, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. It occurred to me in that account that maybe it's not only Naboth that died, maybe the children also died because they didn't pay attention to the one who wants to pass it down to. Who notice? They just canceled them. So it, I, I want to believe that when the killing was happening, it's not just the killing against but maybe his whole household was worth that because nobody was able to trace anything to them anymore. And the guy said, You can take possession, nobody can speak for him, nobody can fight for him. Next one, please. And it came to pass when they have had that Nabot was dead, that I have arose up to go down to the valley of Nabot to take possession of it. Uh-huh. And the word, this is where I'm more concerned. This is where I want to start. And the word of the Lord came to Elisha the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, is in the vineyard of Naboth, where thou is gone down to possess it. Eh? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Don't say the Lord, as thou kill and also taken possession. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Don't say the Lord. In the place where dog lick the blood of Naboth, shall dog lick thy blood, even thine. Now, next one. Please, next one. And they have said to Elijah, As thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Eh? Lord, I will bring evil upon thee, I will take away thy posterity. Eh? This is where I'm going. I will take away thy posterity. Who know what that means, posterity? Who know the meaning of posterity? Anybody? Follow me. Don't be cut off now. 
Maybe I should read it. I will take away their posterity and cut off from Ahab in that be set against the wall. And in that is shut up and left in Israel. Who notice that God is not talking about Ahab anymore? Look at me. Next verse. I will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha. I don't have time to deal with Jeroboam and Basha. If I have dealt with those two guys, you will not ever be wicked again in your life. And the sons of Ahijah, for the provocation that the house provoked me unto anger and made Israel to say, eh? And of Jezebel, God said the same thing. Dog shall eat her, eh? This is, this, is, this is where I begin to have start talking. Who can read what this says here? Can you read it? The, in the diet of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And in the diet in the feet, shall the fan of the ear eat. Nobody shall eat it. So when you now see strange death in the family, most of the time, let me tell you, <laughs> you want to, let's do deeply. We need to pray, sir. Most of us today, family so much are family that that today, the two people that have rose and really exact, exceed in the family as use power negatively. And the influence of what they do don't only happen to them. These guys are supposed to be princes. The one that died and dog is eating is a prince forever. All the sons of Ahab are in princehood forever. They are qualified to be king after kings after kings. God said, nobody will arise anymore. I will cut them off. I will cut away your posterity. That means everything called destiny is over. And I will begin to deal with your family and they shall be dying. Because God cannot eat you if you die among your people. They will bury you. So God will have to separate them at the time and waste them, separate them and waste them, separate. And it happened in this scripture. All of them separated and wasted. Then you begin to answer a question. Why is it happening to some family that some things just become an issue and a pattern there? It's because along the way, a leader, a family, a leader of family has done something wrong and the whole lineage are paying the price. This is why you need to pray. Sir, success might not be inherited, but failure is always imparted. You might not hear the success of lineage ahead of you sometimes. But when they face her, the impact of that failure goes down. And that is why today I would like somebody who has anything called life in it to go home today with a drive. Say, God, I might not know, but some of us have seen some patterns in our family. Patterns that has come. And that pattern does not just come. As somebody somewhere was raised or raised by God. And when he was raised by God, he misused it. The misuse of that lifting by God caused a pattern. Because when God is angry, he does not cause the one that rise. He causes those who should rise with him. So because we cut away posterity. So you now say seven generations who didn't know anything. Who didn't even know history. Now begin to come and they are fantastic going to school. I had of guys. There was something that happened in the text some days ago. A guy finished they are doing graduation. The young elder brother came to see the younger brother. Somebody was fighting somewhere. Come on. A policeman was called to settle the issue. And the policeman was trigger happy. He shoot down. Both brothers died. Two of them. The one that has graduated, who has come to now stay, celebrate the one that is graduating. Both of them died. It's a family. When they told me, I said, no, it's not normal. It's not about God. Something, something has happened. So let's ask, what happened before? Then they said it has happened to the nations we I heard before that two people die like that. And when those two die, they are the star. They will leave the world. Don't you know? I showed you one day that Batu always leave the poor. Takes away the mobile, takes away the mighty, takes away the great, but leave the price of the poor. And that is why I want you to pray today. If you are praying to rise, you must also pray to leave. Because when you are praying to rise, there are people that, that do some things that want to cut you off. My God, I wish I can tell you more. But I can't allow this house to go without dealing with this issue of posterity. Posterity is what has been flowing, sir. That is your right. Your destiny, your greatness. But God can cut it off. So people are not entitled anymore to what is good. They don't have to face the brunt of what is evil. I wish I can show you what happened there. Ah! Terrible things happen after Elijah said these words. The sons of Israel begin to die like chicken. It will begin to happen to them. Some of them are dying. So because of this issue, God create war. The ones that God can kill in the home, God creates war so he can kill them. And God starts war to waste. And Bible says, and all the Israel are washed. And when that, when the all die, the war will stop. Then you ask yourself a question, why? 
I can tell you, sir. Why do we think that we produce children and they are struggling? You think struggle is inheritance? No. No. It's not. It's not. It's not. I wish I can teach you more. Yes, you can hear it failure, but failure can be imparted. You can be imparted. I can show you many fathers, many kings here, who by their reason of what they do, make their children to go through trying times. Let me even show you one. Let's leave it here. Who knows the guy? Who knows that guy? Oh, you say, oh, kings is talking about family. When you read kings, you know how to deal with issues. And I wish I can show you just one or two of how to deal with these issues, how to cut it off. Stop this flow that started from somewhere, somewhere you don't know. A pattern set up. I've seen it. Now my friend, I said, his father had many wives. The guy got the girl pregnant. I thought we left school. Because the father is down, the mother is late. We are the one that went there. Ah, my friend. We got money. We got money. The mother of my friend was the one that went as his mother. We got that money. We do engagement. We go and pay the bad price. We got the wife. The father of that girl was a professor who bought a car, my friend. Give him life. Say, boy, don't worry. Your father is gone. Your mother is gone. And you can do well. Start living. The guy will take the car to go and look for one girl. Carry girls around. Today, the guy is in the US. The guy is in Nigeria. The guy used the girl's paper to get to South Africa, cross to the US. Took the son and have a daughter. She he never looked back. He didn't know how the daughter looked like today. It's okay. My mother get there, got baby. I said, but that man asked last time, they're having issues again. He's going to buy another one again. It's going. He didn't plan to. He always said to me that he won't do it. But this is going to take it down. I can tell you, in the next 10 years, you can tell myself, it's normal. It's a pattern. It's not a wish. It's not a fight. It's a war. You have to win it. It's not a wish. Oh, your mom divorced? And you're thinking, oh, now that is not good. Shut up. Go and check story. Who has divorced before? <laughs> if you find two or three in that story, start praying. Oh, somebody just rise in the family, they become rich very early, then they have drop. Say, so oh, it's just bad decision. So, sorry, shut up. It's not a bad decision. Something is producing it. Everybody cannot be foolish at the same time. It's time to pray. Oh, you saw that there was a struggle. Nobody, everybody has to labor, labor, nobody is making it. And you are thinking, oh, they didn't go to school. Sir, forget it. Education does not undo spirit. Education does not undo spirit. Spirit does not respect education. No, you have to start. I'm fine. Most of us are living off the prayer of some parents who knew what they are going through. And they start praying for you early enough. You know, what amazes me is that when you see a child whose parents <laughs> have labored in prayer, not because they knew they are caught, they are captured. But they started to invest prayer on their children. The Lord, help this child, help this child. They can only pray for you 40%. And you that now rise, that 40% deliverance you now enjoy. You now felt that because they didn't go to school, they are illiterate, they are uneducated, they are this and that. And you felt in your heart that no, I don't need anything, I can just do my life. I'm telling you, it's 40% will always expire. Then the strength of that 40 is no more. You will see back to side, they will recognize you. And you are not praying, you are not dealing with issues yourself, you are not setting principles alive, you are not setting godly principles alive. You. you will deal with issues. I can get it with you, write it down, take it to the bank. I've seen so many to know that that has only happened. People that, and sometimes they, they pray on your prayers can only carry you to take off. They can't sustain you in the air. They can't. They can make you take off. It's open. I know somebody. First job. He got it. He moved to Bodhija. He was getting money. Working in a quarry. Doing well. Always talking rubbish. Speaking rubbish. He thought <laughs> life. I told him, boy, be serious. Say no. If you're going to pray, how are we going to pray? I was a tush boy. So let's go and pray. Say, no, I don't need prayer. That's your problem. That's not. Uh, uh, suddenly, everything crashed one day. That's how far the prayer of the prayer can push him. Now, life is now asking for his own demand, his own sacrifice. Nothing on the other. He moved from Bodhija to Olodo. Who knows Olodo? Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> you understand it? That's how far. Now, now the prayer said we don't pray. That's beginning. But you have gone through tissues. Your parent has drive you enough, start driving yourself. Because they can only push you to a point. Their prayer can make you take off. But your own sacrifice, your own issues, will be the one to sustain you in the air. Yeah, me, sir. They can only pray to take you to a point. You two have to pray to end them to a point. That's how it works. So I'm telling you, I want to close. Ezekiah. Great guy. Ezekiah was a seed of David. 
lineage of David. Direct lineage of David. These guys are fantastic king. Fantastic guys. In Asha, Josiah, these are things that God used to reconcile David back to his head. God produced great kings on him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I wish I would speak about that maybe on Sunday. However, listen to me. The Bible says this guy was sick. God has done great things for him. He was sick. The Bible says when he was sick, God sent Isaiah to him. And the guy, the guy said, you are going to die. The guy talked to the one and said, God, why should I die? I like him. I like his faith. I like his confidence. Why should I die? Yeah, most of us don't question God. Okay. Out of honor and respect. But some men like this guy have the spirit to say, God, no. I don't agree with that decision. Even when you make it. Can, can you rise and say, God, you say I should marry this guy or you say I should go this way? I, I don't agree. And you can challenge God to a, to a conversation. Please. Learn to talk back when God talk. Because most times when God talks, he's waiting for you to talk back. So the guy spoke and said, God, no, I can't die. His guy was still in the bed, turning to the wall. When God spoke to Isaiah, go back and tell him you know that. Oh, say, I've added 15 years. So the guy knew that he has 15 years to live. That's the grace of his own. If you know the day you are going to die, you will live right. Don't you? Don't you? you will live right. If you know that Isaiah, yeah, eh, oh, I like to live up to 60 years old. Only my she was in thirty. Only my she was in forty. That's be fifty. Only I be be ten look cool. And you begin to live right, see? so that you can make it. And then life is always sweet when you are young, but when you are old, you are thinking of eternity. So, psh, 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 psh. A woman passed away in the matter. She has been saying it for a long time. She wants to go. She wants to go. And now she is gone. She went to US. She told them, "I'm not coming back." This is the last time I'm going. Say, Mama, you are just 71. Say, I'm going. She's been sitting for a long time. She wanted, she wants to go more than she wants to leave. She wants to stay here. And death took her. Okay, that's the wish of the saint. It's okay. So this guy, inclusive. After he was healed, and he has 18 years, he felt, man, I will enjoy myself. I'm neighbored. And the guy had people came to greet him from Babylon. He says, he showed them all his house. Everything. Gold, silver, everything. As they left, God sent someone to him. He said, Why are you visiting us? He said, Ah. They are from Babylon. They came to greet me. That's why I don't, I tell people, sympathy and sentiment can put you in spiritual issues. Spiritual dangers. They can put you there. Oh, so what happened? He said, I'm just showing them everything. God said, What did they see? He said, Everything. He said, Everything they saw, they will take from you. Everything they laid their eyes upon, they will take everything away. He said, God, why? God said, don't worry. But if you don't happen in your days, if you happen in your children's days, this guy said, God, it is good. I will no more be here. Do what you want to do today. That's what he said. Can I the truth? There are some things your parents knew you are going to suffer. They knew it. That the way they have raised you, things they have done, you are going to suffer for it. And they kept quiet. And this is you. You are not talking. You know? <laughs> My God. How can I tell you? So let me tell you the truth. Before you know it, some people can trade your future. And the future they are trading is you. So you need to pray. In leadership, leadership has an impact on family. When a man succeeds, success can rob, but it's never a guarantee that you are going to inherit it. But failure can be impacted. And the whole generations can live to suffer for it. I can show you 1,000 stories in the book of Kings. Of how it happened over and over and over again. Talk about the guy called Basha, Jeroboam. Those guys did badly. God says, because you have done badly, I cut your children off. Sometimes I ask myself, what did Jonathan do to deserve death? Who knew Jonathan? What did he do to deserve death? He has gone to many wars. One day, only him faced a whole garrison. Who knew him? And he killed them. Him and some of And he came back. That day, he went to battle. He died. Why? God says, I will wipe out the house. Of so that's why he died. Simple, he's not deserving of death. Somebody failed, and the failure impacted on him. He's a good guy, he agreed to be a deputy of David. He agreed, he's in love with David genuinely, but God does not be in love with him. That's the issue. Can I tell you the truth? If you are into family, then you need to pray because somebody somewhere along the line must have raised a pattern as some people are going through today. So I need you to go home, be angry in your spirit. 
I need to go home and speak and say, Lord, it doesn't matter how many generations before me has done that behind me, has lived, and their life, they have done something. Most of you, can I ask you to, how many of you have come from king's family, royal families? Raise your hand. Your father, your mother, are from royal family. Raise your hand. Oh, we are all here. Can I see you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of us are in trouble. You better start praying. Because I'm telling you, if they told you what your fathers have done to sustain power, see the kingship you are celebrating, I'm a prince. Prince Manaoye, Prince Manaolo, Prince Otide, Prince Umbo. All those nonsense. It's good. But if you know the price they pay to retain that power in your family, you will know that you have to fight a strong battle. So I'm telling you, sir, don't joke with it. Some of you, your father is not even a king, but he's a chief. He's not a chief. He's a man who has run some leadership before. And by the sense he has run, because he has to do some things, there are things he has done that God himself is not happy with. And today, the failure has imparted. So generations after, are carrying the brunt. And now, they have raised a victim in their future. And I need us to pray, if we can, about it. So you also, do not leave this place today. And please, don't just look at what you have, is coming to you. Look at what you also are sending ahead. Because what you are doing now, things you are doing now, somebody ahead of you, stay in your lungs, stay in your womb. X that is coming. Most times I ask myself, a young girl will start doing messages maybe at the age of 15, 14. She did messages from 14 to 24. X will come and go, but none of his child is there. Yet God will promise that woman, we have three children. A child will be born by you. And X are coming every day, and that child is not there. Then you ask yourself, <laughs> how many X has to go for one to come? X keep going every month, every month. Menstruation. Decision. But the child is not there. When the season comes, that child will be produced. And that child will come. I said that child will come great and mighty. That's what we are born for. That's what we are sent for. It's okay. Out of family where people where people died mysteriously at the age. There was a guy that reached out to me and I'm telling you that before they reached 60, at 60 they died. All of them are just dying. No man in that family has exceeded 60. And they know. And they are all having fun. Then they die. They come to do the better. Then 60, and they die. Then one of them said, I'm the next one to be 60. Then they begin to pray. Three years ahead. That's a wise man. Because he knew that he's the next one to go. <laughs> Others then say 60. What gives us? He knew. And he, he told me, this one, this one, this one, all of them. So the guy said, three years ahead. I'm three years to 60 now. Sir, pray for me. The guy is speaking for prayer everywhere. Because he knew that it might be 67, it might be 58, it might be 59. That he will go. So he begins to pray. Lord, I want to see 60. Go be here. But the good are there. He didn't pray. What you're talking about tonight is that what comes to you as a pattern is on the flesh. What you used to conquer the flesh is the spirit. Now, the pattern is not there forever. It's not unconquerable. That's what I said. I'm telling you that pattern is there. But you that have come into the spirit cannot take the spirit to conquer the pattern. So, God said, the father of Josiah was a very wicked man. We knew that. And God says, a son will come from him. He shall be a Josiah. He shall do what is right. Why? God has to bring a spiritual force. The man doesn't want to give out to children anymore. Josiah was the last one. So God wiped away all the sons. Josiah can rise as a king. He became king at the age of seven because he's the youngest one. The Bible says, before, why did he become king at seven? Why did the father not have long time with him? You must ask questions. Why does the father of Josiah died early when he was how does he come to king at seven because all the brothers are gone why did god take all of them away so that they will not impart the same thing in them into him so god wants to break a pattern he exercised spiritual authority he wasted men he wasted flesh so he raised that boy and that one was what they called it's not Uzzah, this last one the one that they took out of the 72 sons that atalaya want to kill he took him they take him to the pattern. god took him into the temple so he can change the pattern so God changed pattern. How? By bringing the spirit to walk over the flesh. Most times, when a man is going by the flesh, you act by the flesh, you live by the flesh, you will enter into condemnation. But condemnation does not mean ends of salvation. Oh, oh, That you are condemned doesn't mean you are not saved anymore. That's why majority are saved and still condemned. Yes. Because what makes you condemned is that you are walking in the flesh. A believer that they said is a believer. You are a believer, you know. But you know that in your family, the issue is anger. Everybody has it. The anger when he rises to the peak, it destroys. He cuts, it demotes. You two are displaying anger. It's displaying anger. 
You are a believer. You are praying, working in God. It's not anger. You didn't deal with it. Every time you say, it's our it's nature, it's our spirit, it's our family heritage, it's our this, it's our that. No problem. The day the anger caught you off, you still became a Christian. Even if you die by it, you still make him. But you are condemned. Because the anger will have caught you off the inheritance of God, caught you off the destiny of the kingdom, caught you off the access to the grace of God, caught you off everything. So you are condemned as a believer. I can show you. Should I show you more in the Bible? The first half of Peter, when the Bible says to you, Peter, Peter, the enemy wanted to sift you, I pray for you, all those stuff. Peter was doing all of those things. Peter was still cutting here. Jesus has to come back the second time. So Peter said, Peter, do you look at these things? There was a transformation. There was a change of pattern. So Peter's life was now driven by love, not by law anymore. Yet, Peter has no place to deal with some things. And when Paul saw him, Paul was chastising him. See, what you are doing is wrong. He condemned him. First attitude. Why? Peter was still eating with his circumcised until other people came. When other people came, he, he separated himself. Paul condemned him. That's condemnation. Why? At that point, Peter was not working by the Spirit. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If in a family, or the pattern is that the ladies get pregnant, nobody enter into the right marriage. They always go through pregnancy, pregnancy, pregnancy. Now, let me, let me ask you that. You might think, what is wrong with the pregnancy? A lot is wrong. Because when you fulfill that pattern, you also lose a particular order of progress is lost. When you fulfill that pattern, a progress is lost. So, when you fulfill that pattern, that's okay. Me, I will not do it. How do you balance it? It's simple. You are praying to get an husband, praying to fight off temptation, but you can't say because you are praying now, you now begin to get loosed, go to such a person I have issues with, maybe bosses at work, we are trying to always come to you. They are married. They are trying to and say, she will want to marry, she will be not there, she, and you are losing around them. And if you are losing around them, you get pregnant, nothing will happen. The balance is not there. You can still be praying even when you are pregnant, and God is still hearing. But the issue here is that you have lost a progress. So the balance there is that while you are praying, there are boundaries that is divinely instructedly set. God says we. If you even follow what God says, these are, are the enough boundaries. What God says on his own. Don't do this. Don't go there. If you study what the Bible says and you follow it, there are no boundaries to every issues of life. You don't even need to set your own. Just follow what God says. It's enough. And I find out. And when you, when you follow what God says to us in the Bible and you follow it, it's enough boundaries for you to avoid any spirit or not. You don't even need to create your own. Just follow that one is enough. Okay, if God says, you don't fornicate. Uh, I can say have pregnancy. Have you not broken it? You don't even need to say another one. Uh, your your own issue, your own pattern in your family is that they all rise and they fall, and you know it that they rise and fall is their problem. Then you are rising, and this same you now begin to fight your boss. I have a cousin who, in those days, an elderly uncle who fought his boss. Yeah, no reason. That I know. Why? He fought, he was defending, he was fighting. He even got to his office and said, we slapped the boss. He's the next to the boss, so the boss is almost retiring. Can't you see the pattern? The boss is almost retiring. Almost at the end, he now fought the boss, he now demoted. Somebody behind him now rose to the top. You think he's not? Why? Even if he's praying, and what happened, like they rise and fall, you should know that there will be temptation that will come your way. You pray to have enough strength and grace to run through it without getting angry and, th- and you maintain yourself by the help of the Holy Ghost and you go through it. The moment you go through that thing, the battle lost its strength. Imagine that my uncle prayed enough, have enough grace, to have enough patience not to speak, not to react, and he just went through it, though he was cheated, and he took it. The next thing for him is promotion. Because he would have been the, the number one officer in Nigeria in that company, and he fought that man, and the man sacked him. The man that should take over from him. And nobody can say anything. He's sacking for The man, if I'm your boss and I, I want to retire in the next 10, uh, 10 minutes and you're offended and I sack you, the sack will stand. That's why he lost it. So, balance is just doing what God says and uh, receiving grace in the place of prayer to walk through it. I believe there is no more question. Thank you. 
We hope you were blessed by that powerful message. You can follow us on all our social media handles at The Word Center Nigeria. The, the Word Center, Center, a people fat and flourishing. Stay blessed.